gents. Yeah. We're into the new year. Well and truly, everyone's back at work. And some of us have even taken on New Year's resolutions. Baz, how is dry January going? It's very tough. Very especially tough. After, especially after... Aren't we, we played cricket 10 days on, in, aren't we? Cricket on Sunday was very, very tough after a good win. Yep. A skip up and not being able to have a, a beverage was... Uh, Diet Coke it was. Yep, indeed. Well, luckily, we're sponsored by Joy that not only does beers, but they also do great palmers, the Yorkshire Hotel. So if you like Baz, you're taking it easy in January, or you're just, you know, giving it a break, but you're hungry after cricket, head down there in Abbotsford to the Yorkshire Hotel. Great palmers. Make sure you book ahead, though. It's always chocking. Perfect for those uh, one days coming up and the T20 BBL games. Exactly. There's always cricket on, there's sport. Bring your mates, have a banner, have some food, and just enjoy your time because... They make it enjoyable for us to be able to do this pod. All right. So, Baz. Yeah. Special pod announcement. We've got a guest. We do have a guest. Would you like to introduce him? I'm a bit worried I might say his last name. That's why I have one across to you. <laughs> <laughs> we moved the first one. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, through our little, my little network at Old Brighton Footy Club, yep. I've uh, managed to get Will Pukowski. Well done. Yes. Well done. yes. So, yeah. obviously plays at Melbourne. Played a shield game with Victoria, captain the under twenty three future leagues team as well. For this about, this for year, about 10 yeah, that's right. We'll get to that later. Still, it's a tick. <laughs> it's a tick. Um, obviously, just dominated the under nineteen state championships last year, and would have been in the World Cup this year if you were able to play. No, too old. Too old. Too no, old missed right. out. Stiff. Probably yeah, no under nineteen baffer rules. And no, that, no, right? no, if no, it's no. too old, it's too old. So. Yeah. So, oh, but yeah, Will's on board and he's going to be joining us throughout the pod, and should be good fun. Awesome. Do you have any opening comments you want to make, Will? Want to set the, uh, set the ground rules here or no, we're all good I to go? No, all's fair play. I'm happy to yep, play along. So, awesome. Yeah, game on. I've all been right. told he's very good on the lift. There we go. Yeah, so well, it should be good. should be good. Here we go. So the first segment we usually do, mate, is uh, Park Life Lessons. Uh, Baz and I are cricket nuffies, but we're obviously not elite cricketers. So our grade is a bit different to probably what you're used to playing and what we talk about a lot. But uh, we like to pick out one little nugget each week from what we've done on the weekend. And uh, this weekend was dominated uh, by the pitch. And uh, unfortunately, Baz here is the club curator. Yeah. <laughs> and he had an absolute mare. Yeah. And uh, he cooked yeah. the pitch hard. Yeah, I did stuff up a little bit, but, you know. It happens. It happens. And the umpires checked it and they said it's okay to play. Yeah, they said it's fine to play. And really, after the first over, you knew it was going to happen. It's very juicy. Lots of t- trampoline type bounce, yeah. or tennis ball bounce if you're Chris Rogers. It was pretty much like a day one MCG pitch on a Sheffield Shield game. Just lots of balloon bounce and get yeah, on with it. Yeah, it's yeah, only yeah. tricky, but not that hard. Yeah. Well, it's been beautiful. How'd you stuff that up? Um, our our uh, turf wicket is brand new. Okay. Uh, turf square, sorry, is brand new. And the council have had two attempts this year to, to do it right. Yeah. We started on our ground. We didn't play for the first eight weeks at our ground. Yeah. Uh, just because it's just it's stuffed. Uh, they use Portland uh, dirt on as well, clay, which um, if you're a proper nuffy, you know it's no good. <laughs> you want your Merry Creek. Um, and it just dries out really quickly. It doesn't hold any water. So yeah. on the Friday night, it was already just cracking, and I was a bit worried. So on the Saturday, I was being 42. I watered a few times throughout the day, and I came back about 5.20, and it was just opened up again. So I thought, oh, I'd better water it again. But as I started watering it, the cool change came through an hour earlier than expected, and it just didn't dry. Like I've, All year, if you've been down at the club and you've seen it, just, it just didn't dry. So we played on a sticky pudding. I was, I was forty-two that. on the Sunday, yeah. So because we got caught off, obviously sat that. So, but yeah, like it was the same for both teams. You know, we wore a few, they wore a few. Um, but obviously, they didn't adapt. So they were none for forty. Or, sorry, one for forty-seven after five overs in T twenty. Yeah. You think they're going all right? Yeah. They were on seven or eight down after twenty for one hundred and twelve. Yeah. So you think they would have adapted to as our batsman did? We we cruised with sixteen, seven overs. Did down, but like they were still copping ones in the chest and stuff, so... Sounds like a good game of cricket to me, I don't see the pitch complaints. Yeah, well, they didn't complain until later that night when I looked at, we signed all the paperwork and there was no protest, and uh, they still protested later on that night, which oh, a yeah. bit of a snake you know, snake that's, You know, that's kind of a classical thing, they went back to the club, everyone's having a few... We give them a few, beers. Yeah, a few beers, yeah. and everyone's like, you know what we should do? Bloody well protest, that yeah. was bullshit. If they won, they wouldn't have protested. No. And I was seriously was at the bat first as well. That's because I thought it would only get worse. But actually, you know, it stayed the same. And, you know, we, we well, were it was too, 40 open, so we're it wasn't going to dry out. Yeah, we're on top. We've been pretty good, so we're pretty confident winning no matter what. So anyway, that's that's what happened. But have you had any experiences with 
Poor Dex. Yeah, we had um, down at Brighton Grandma, we had a few dodgy ones from yep. time to time. I still remember one in year 11, I reckon it was. We were playing Xavier at the Crowler Oval, which we all love. Yep. And we got to the game, and our curator, best bloke of all time, couldn't fault that, but I'm not sure he was the best curator <laughs> going around. And we've rocked up, and like this wicket is absolutely horrendous. So yep. like, we cannot play on that. So what he's done on the morning of the game is like the old used wicket from the previous week. He's sort of mowed that a bit, rolled it, rolled it maybe five or ten times, and then bang, there you go, yep. away you go. So we're playing on the wicket that he hadn't been preparing all week. Yep. And I reckon we got Xavier out for about 88 or something. This was in a 50 over a side game. And we snuck home six down or something. But was it a bit like Pune? Like it, it was, was, yeah, it was worse turn. than Pune. It was yeah. horrendous. Yeah. Like, he was doing everything. And like, yeah, we luckily, I, I said to the captain who was Hugh Hamilton, I said, mate, I'm not batting if we bat first. I'm, I'm just batting at 12. Like, yeah. This is horrendous. <laughs> I'm not, not putting myself through this. So luckily we won the toss and bowled. And yeah. Made Xavier battle with it, they got a tiny bit better by the time we were batting in the afternoon session. Yeah. I'm a bit of a princess like that sometimes. Actually. That's all right. Yeah. You know, when you're as good as yourself, you can be a bit of a princess. <laughs> Don't know about that. <laughs> and obviously in Premier Cricket as well, that was the infamous uh, pitch that was made the wrong length. Yeah. Um, have you had any moments like that in your Premier Cricket career as well? No, I haven't, but I was actually there that day. I was out injured and went and watched the game that, like the pitch was the wrong length. Yeah. Like whilst watching it, you didn't really notice. Like I didn't really notice a difference. And then yeah, next day this huge thing comes out, bang! The pitch is the wrong length. I don't know how you can. Well, funnily enough, Mar and Bina had the same problem in round one this year as well. In our comp, they had the the pitch at uh, an extra metre, whatever it was, too long. So I don't know how you can suffer that. And, and you never played at North Sydney or anything like that. I played at North Sydney. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's postage stamp, that's for sure. Yeah, but any never, problem with the wicket there? Nah, well, I was, I was already out injured by the time the Vicks rocked up there in the yeah. JLT, so I was at home watching on the live stream. I was stuck, half volleys were nearly hitting blokes in the head, so yeah, yeah it's probably a better, better spot than out in the middle, I think. <laughs> no. Let me just tell you what I think about it. I think it was a disgraceful performance from a captain who got his sums wrong today, and I think it should never be permitted to happen again. I think it was a very poor performance. One of the worst things I have ever seen done on a cricket field. <laughs> All righty then. So you've already impressed us there with your chat. The, the, <laughs> rumors, the rumors were true. This man can hold the mic. Probably better than each of us. This might be called the World Procosity Cricket Hour maybe, <laughs> yeah. by the end of the podcast. But um, we're going to go and jump with the Super Over. Six quick fire questions that hopefully I haven't heard before. Um, some of just, they just really get to know you as a, more as a person and as a cricket lover as opposed to Will, the you know the CA contract player or the Vic wannabe or the you know form, like the two B test player. More just about you and who you are as a dude. So first off, are you a cricket player, a cricket fan, a cricket nuffy, or a cricket badger? It's all of the above. An answer. Um, probably, yeah, but that's a point. Probably that's probably nothing, bad, yeah. Probably nothing above everything because I like playing, I like watching. Like I can probably just encapsulates everything. Yeah, like like backyard cricket, like indoor, or well, not the actual version of indoor cricket, but like in the house and stuff yeah. with like out off the couch and all that. Yeah. So I'd have to go with nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, like, what what lengths? What would be like the most absurd thing cricket wise you've watched this like this last twelve months? Um, probably the worst thing I've done is. What dad, dad's in the same boat, so he's coming down with me here. But what we do, so we'll pick out of like, so the South Africa India Test Series on at the moment, we'll pick which one's better to watch at the time out of that and the Big Bash, and then record the other one and watch that in the morning. I see, I, I, I'll take it a step further. I've got my phone with Cricket Australia, so I have the BBL on. Ah, that's good. Then I have right. the test on. Yeah, but I like this and approach then, too, because it means you I've had with the, you know, the India, South Africa, yeah, or even right. the under 19s. Yeah, I got caught out with that once or twice. The missus, she wasn't too happy. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's good. But I like this because if you record it, you give it full attention. So here yeah. you split. Like obviously, you're in the moment, you're alive. You're a journalist. You need to do that. It's, you know, part of your integral. I don't know. But you got to be. Journalist. You're right now, mate. Yeah, okay. You get you get across it all. Whereas this, it's kind of like just pure for the pleasure. It's like I'm gonna watch this for now. And I'm gonna get back to that tomorrow. Yeah, like that. That's and the same. The other thing is with that. Dad and I have a deal. You can't check the score as well. Yeah, it's, and it's the same yeah. with all live sports. So it's like if one of us knows the score. When we're watching it on court, so we're big Premier League fans as well until Optus went and yeah. took it and we don't have Optus, so we can't watch it all. Yeah, I've done it at He's a United fan as well. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. United fan. Yeah. So when we used to do that, that was the same thing where it was whenever we get up, no one checks the score and it's basically like watching it live. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's better. That, and then all my mates used to complain about being like, oh, look, surely you can check the score. Well, no, if you just don't check it, you're basically mm. watching it live. Yeah. And you don't waste three hours sleep or whatever trying to get up at 2 a.m. I can't do that. I can't help myself. I've got to check. Yeah. I just don't get that. That's that's, that's 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 nothing. That's yeah, easy. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. <laughs> I like that. Welcome aboard. Yeah. All right. Second question: Are you a dreamer? Okay, I want to play in the baggy green one day, or a realist? I just focus on making runs at premier level, whatever level I am now, and whatever happens, happens. I'd like to say I'm a realist, but I'm definitely a dreamer. Yeah, beautiful. And have you always have you always been a dreamer? Like, like obviously every kid at six kind of thinks. I want to play in a test group for Australia. Yeah. But has that always kind of like gone the whole way through? Yeah. Always been a dreamer. Would probably tell people I'm a realist to like come across in a more hardcore way, but definitely a dreamer. Yeah. For sure. Always have been. It's good that you're a dreamer because I want to put you under the pump a bit here. About four weeks ago or five weeks ago, I did a little thing on who's the next top five or six players to, you know, replace Steve Smith. <laughs> and uh, you were on that list. So, um, <laughs> There's Very a, generous. There was a few others in the from this, uh, even you know Mackenzie Harvey yeah. to you know twenty two year olds that I had in that list, but yeah, you were definitely one of them. So very generous. Yeah, yeah. and very true. So it's, it's recorded. It's not just pump your tires off because <laughs> you're in the room. He actually said it out there. <laughs> right. So on that uh, question three, when did you first realise you were very good at cricket? <laughs> um. Oh. I always knew I liked it more. Yeah. From a young age, just the reason was because. I didn't like training for any other sport. I just liked playing, but I actually enjoyed training as well as playing cricket. So that's yeah. how I knew I liked it. Probably in under 12s because I used to like win the batting average every year. So I was like, oh, I must be pretty decent if yeah. I win it. Like one, like three or four years in a row. So I'm like, I must be doing something right. That was probably it. Yeah. I and you mentioned that you liked training. Would you consider yourself to be a, a trier or a flyer? So you are like first to training, last to leave, or you're more kind of cruising on the gifted. No, nah, definitely try. Yeah, yeah. Not not as much natural talent as a lot of other people, but probably would yeah stay for longer than others. Yeah, and in that obviously this week there's been the whole uh, Maxi Gate that he yeah. doesn't train smart enough. Yeah. Um, when you say you train hard, what what in your you know, level? What does that actually mean for us who aren't exposed to that? Um, I'll probably try and I try and hit a lot of balls. I. I don't know, I don't know. I'm always like looking for, this sounds really nuffy again, yeah. it sort of relates to the thing. I always look for ways I can improve. Like yeah. I'll try and look at players that are a lot better than me and go, oh, what can, what's the difference between you and me at the moment? Oh, this, this, and this is three things, for example. It's obviously a lot more than three, but I'll identify three and go, yep, yeah, all right, this is how I can improve these things and then try and work on that. Yep. Probably is the best yeah. way I can answer that. No, oh, definitely. Does that mean you have a girlfriend who feeds your bomb? <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite at that stage yet. Not like Steve Yeah, Smith. find a girlfriend yeah. first, and then secondly, not Sounds sure like... I could find one that would actually be willing to Well, Steve support. Smith found one, so... Well, if I get paid 7 to $10 million a year and she gets the benefit from that, maybe she would feed yeah. yeah. me. Sounds like though Dad might be keen to head down the nets and... Yeah, yeah that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Dad yeah. chances my girlfriend. Oh, right, so, yeah. yeah. So that, that feels that imperfect, and you don't have to worry about any of the other stuff. Yes, yeah. and he obviously pays as well. Yeah, he pays, yeah, yeah, exactly. so yeah. 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 Well, We're getting to a stage now where my parents are starting to make me pay for stuff and it's not a good stage. Not, not, not yet. Still- <laughs> That's what you need. It's like, a shout out to any sponsors out there. The the sponsorship at the household is right now. He <laughs> needs a full-time real one to yeah. help him I out. Keep on th- I keep on threatening to move out, but they know I'm just not going to move out. Oh, so obviously on a base salary in <laughs> yeah. Victoria, so help him out with some sponsorships, people. Yeah. Maybe the uh, Yorkshire can jump on. Oh, I reckon so, yeah. Um, weird one, man cab or no man cab? And if you did, what, what would be the circumstance? No man cab unless it was super obvious to the point of cheating. Yeah. Um, do I have to explain why? Yeah, yeah. Because as a batter, like when I'm backing up, I'm basically zoned out until the balls hit or like the bloke, other bloke calls or whatever. So like I'm not deliberately cheating. Like if he goes through his act, because then they change the rule that if they go through their action, yeah, yeah, not, you can still be out. Like yeah. I'm not trying to cheat. I'm drifting down the wicket, like in my own, bit, like thinking about my dog or something. Like I'm not actually trying to gain an advantage. Yeah. Um, what was the second part to that? Um, oh yeah, no, like what circumstances? So like say you're bowling, like would it change if, you know, there's, you need a wicket to win, there's only an over left in the day, it's a test no, match and you go change. knock it off or... No, too much of like a fair, like I want to win fair, I'd prefer yeah. to win fair than cheat to yeah. win. Yeah. Even though now it's not technically cheating? 
Yeah. No, so it's, it's morally not yeah, right. Yeah. There's a moral Sportsman, objection there. Sportsmanship. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, you mentioned there when you're in the non-strikers, you're drifting off. Uh, what do you think about when you're not like in between balls when you're batting or, you know, in between balls when you're fielding? What are those things, your little switch off thing, what comes into your head first usually? Either a song that I've heard that's been stuck in my head. Yeah. That would be one. I try, I actually consciously try to think like what would my dog be doing right now just because that completely switches you off and like gives you a bit of a chance to like relax and get back in the zone, I guess, for the next ball. Or just like think about what I'm going to be doing that night. Or just saying that completely switches me off from cricket so I've got enough concentration to last me through the whole day when it matters. Yeah. I just want to ask, I love the image of Steve Smith thinking about his dog whilst <laughs> touching 12 of his pads. Yeah. Or, or Mitchell Johnson singing Let It Go. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's good. Oh, no, that's, that's good insight. You need to know which, what sort of songs you're thinking of. Uh, <laughs> it all changes. It all changes. Uh, Bale just mentioned that you're a, a massive United fan. Yeah. If you, if you didn't have cricket, what sport would you love to be awesome at? Soccer, 100%. Yeah? I'll be playing attacking midfield for Manchester United. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> even, I even love right I, now. Like, even even that's I do even, have cricket, yeah. I'd still be playing <laughs> Yeah, just United. Yeah. So you're done with footy then? Done with footy, yeah. 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 I got, when I got smacked in the head, yeah. that was it. So that's, that, that's obviously what led to your whole issues with you. Yeah. Like, it was footy, yeah. So yeah. never again. No. So I actually I, liked it. Like, I liked to play again, but I just not can't. So. You were, you were, without, you know, you were pretty decent at footy too, weren't you? I was okay, yeah. 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 Would have slotted beautifully onto a halfback flank. Yeah, yeah. Under nine inches. Yeah. I would have had you too. Yeah. Don't worry. That was, that, that's what I was leading to. You know? yeah. Still able to play this. this Loose hand in defence. Yeah. So my favourite position. My QB. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing is, I know you're a Collingwood man. Yeah. So where do you think, I know it's a bit off topic. No, okay. But he's a, he's a Collingwood nuffy as well. Yeah. So where are we going this year, mate? Are we going to, are we doing any good or not? Because I'm, I'm a Collingwood man as well, so. I was at training yesterday, actually, because we did a run around the town. And my mate Nathan Murphy from Brighton Gums just been drafted. I was stoked when he got picked up. Yeah, yeah. so we were just did the old walk by just to see how he was going in training. Unfortunately, in the ten minutes where he lost, you went nowhere near it. But yeah, that's all right. Um, we'll where are we go. going? I honestly think we're going nowhere this year. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about that as well. Dad and I were going through our list the other night, like going through our. This is what we think our best twenty-two is. And I think Dad's comment to me was, yeah, it's probably a good year to go up to Brisbane and spend three months up there rather than <laughs> sit here and have to go to the footy every second week. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about uh, Darcy Moore playing back. Why I like it, in, but I just don't think we've got enough forwards. Well, I agree. I, we haven't got enough forwards. We haven't got enough defenders. Yeah. We keep drafting midfielders till the cows come home. I've got... We could talk about this for three yeah. hours if you wanted to. Although Buckley was training today as well, so maybe, maybe yeah, he's coming back. He comes back and I'll give you a chance. <laughs> I was wondering, like, the Herald Sun wrote an article about it and... They were like, he's looked like the best player on the team. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be hard, mate. <laughs> Pendles obviously wasn't training, though. Yeah, <laughs> very true, very uh, true. The last one, I think, on this is, yeah. uh, so you captain the under-23 Futures League game. I know it was only for a short period of time, but is that where you think you see yourself going? Is that what you want to do? And like, Obviously, the Vic team, or was it just circumstances? Or um, I'd like to think so, yeah. I've yeah. always enjoyed it. I've, I like kind of thinking about like, I like being involved in the game that directly, like to the point where you really influence it. Yeah. Especially because I don't bowl like in the field. You can obviously feel well, which has an influence. But I, it's probably every sportsman would probably say this, but I feel like what I think is right. Like, yeah. Quite a, quite a bit of the time. So I, just oh, sort of I, sit I think about that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in that regard, yes, and like I enjoy the extra responsibility. So yeah. I yeah I'd like to get another few opportunities to do that in the second eleven, and then. Who knows what could happen in the future, but yeah, I'd like to think so. Yep, sweet. Nice. And then the uh, free hit to round out the Super Over, which has been a very barrel esque one. I think we've got through 12 <laughs> deliveries there. Yeah. Um, what is the one question you wish someone had asked you in an interview but hasn't yet? Okay, I think everyone, all my mates, rip into me because they think all my answers are really media trained and just straight to the point. Yeah. So I'd like someone to pull me up on that and say, no, give me like a more realistic answer that would be my one where like they ask a generic question like and you, you give a generic them, answer yeah you just give a generic answer and it's like because the other thing is I hate it like listening to press conferences and stuff especially after a game of footy and like the questions are so simple and like the answers are just so predictable and I'm like I'd like it for someone to actually pull me up and say no nah, I want a legitimate answer. like no my answers are legitimate but yeah. an answer that actually you know gives you insight beyond the obvious 
And would you like, as a as a consumer as well as an athlete, would you prefer press conferences to be like in the ninth over against Stuart Broad, you got you got hit in the shoulder, and then from there uh, we noticed you took a shuffle back. Where you is like, what kind of technique changes did you make to combat the pitch and his short bowling? Do you want that, or do you want more like insights into his thinking or their thinking, whatever? Like I, as a I'm, consumer, I'm probably more going thinking as a consumer. Like, I want to know. I don't know when this is. I'm going to use Collingwood as an example here. So we played Adelaide this year. Yeah. We're 50 points up, playing a certain brand of footy. I was in Adelaide. <laughs> I would like. I would like someone to ask Nathan Buckley or the captain or whatever. Like, what happened? Give me a. Give me five points as to what changed from us being 50 points up halfway through the third quarter to drawing the game. Like, yeah. what actually changed? Rather than like, oh, so you'd be disappointed that. You drew the game from that position, like yeah. Obviously, we're disappointed. We're mm. fifty points up. Like, I feel like a lot of questions like that, and then even like you listen to Joe Root in the Ashes, and every answer was, "Oh, right. we're in the game for bits, but weren't good enough for long enough." And it's like, "Thanks, Joe. We worked that out. Yeah. That's why you lost four 0 mate. Like, <laughs> just give us a bit more." Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm from some of our younger guys. Um, Will Bukowski, I, in particular, I think is an exciting prospect. He played a couple of Shield games or one Shield game last year, and he's now in the JLT squad. So hearing good reports, Wardy. Yeah, I think he's um, he's as good as I've seen for a long, long time in the young ranks in Victoria. So it's, really? it's great to see a young top order batsman as well. Like he'll probably bat high in the order in both forms for us this year. I think so. Yeah, um, he's still very young, and hopefully, you know, he can have a long career. Yeah, that's a good. Little- Segue again, yeah. he has us absolutely covered here. Yeah, he it's like he's even read the sheet and didn't give it to him. <laughs> anyway, our next segment play or leave, and this will be the Ashlers final 15. On reflection of that, a 4 0 loss to England, we've got talking points which you can either play or leave. Usually, I turn into barrel, and I will do today, but you'll have the ultimate veto. So, if he says leave, but you reckon there's a little nugget under there that's very unpolished, yeah. you can say no, nah, I'll play that. Thank you very much, and we'll hand it across to you. All right, and the first one is, the Ashes was closer than the 4 0 result suggests. So obviously, Joe Reed's been saying, oh, we weren't, we were good, but not for long enough. Jimmy Anderson came out and said, uh, yeah, we'll be on top in some games, if not all games at some stage. But uh, the stats, which I'll give you quickly, Australia took 90 wickets, England 78. Australia declared four times, England none. England were dismissed for five times for less than 300. Australia only once. And England lost by an innings twice. So obviously... That was smashed. Yeah, they kid themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, they were smashed. and they, they can sugarcoat as much as they want, but they were no good. The, the, probably Milan is probably you know, one thing you take away. Best, though, um, you know, Broad and Anderson bowled really well. Maybe Curran looking forward, but and obviously Crane. Hmm. But, um, yeah, I don't think they got much of their opening. Obviously, Cook's a gun. He's made you know, so many th- 11,000 runs, 12, mm-hmm. whatever it is. And the highest score of the MCG ever and the yeah. second highest. And he's probably got another year or two left, and he'll probably be around the next dashes. But from that squad, like, Stone probably won't last. Vince definitely won't last. Milan well, they've already made, I think they're going to make four changes for the two of New Zealand. Yeah. Well, Milan's going to go to three. Yeah. Roots going to go to state, hopefully go to four, stay at four. Then Bearso says at five. So all of a sudden, you've kind of got a, a bit of a... Nucleus there with Cook. Yeah. So they look better already. And then obviously it depends who you come in. I don't know whether balance stays or not. Uh, whether folks get to go, even though he's a keeper, but he can bat a bit. And yet, yeah, you look at their bowling and you just wonder where their wickets are coming from once Borden and Anderson aren't there. So for me, look, they got smashed and yeah, I've got to talk about the same yeah, really. Fair yeah. enough. And for you, were, like, were, they just, were they crap or were Australia kind of good? Um, I completely agree with you. I reckon they got absolutely smashed. And, like, the other thing is we couldn't have produced pitches more conducive to them. Like, we built up our fast bowling attack like there's no tomorrow and then produced slow wickets that basically gave them nothing other than lacquer, yet we still absolutely smacked them. Yeah. And I agree, like, a few a few of their players are a bit um, Below iffy, iffy I yeah. guess. And even the young blokes coming through, like, they look good and could be good players, but I don't see Tom Curran getting many wickets in Australia, bowling low 130s and not no. swinging yet. No. Not, there's, yeah, a, there's only two bowlers in the world that can do that. That's Vernon and, uh, yeah. and Anderson, Jimmy yeah. Anderson. Yeah. So the rest of them all bowl 140s. Yeah, yes. fast, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, now you mentioned the pitches. Do we think that all test matches in Australia should be day-night tests to combat the homogenous drop index? I said to sleeve this because I think it's a bullshit question. But anyway. mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'll play yeah. and say... Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, like one or two is good. Yeah. 
Um, Adelaide's a bit of a festival, which is really good and everything, but no. no. The, or you, it's not that hard to produce a wicket that, well, I don't know, because I'm not a curator, I'm like that. <laughs> 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 it's not that much for curator after <laughs> leaving, mate, either. It doesn't seem that, well, you, you've got good experience at leaving wickets with a fair bit in them, so I can't see how it's that hard to, yeah. like even that pitch that, South Africa and India played on in Cape Town. I know they lost a lot of wickets because it was under covers for a day and a bit, but before that, the first team had made 290, the other team made 210, and then it was a bit of a minefield after that, but that feels like good test cricket to me where you have to yeah. sort of earn your runs. And, but if you bat well, you can make him. But like, De Villiers still looked reasonably comfortable on it. I yeah. know he's an exception. But, but still, like, yeah, yeah, if it was an absolute shocker, he'd be yeah. with the rest of them. Yeah. yeah. Um. Has the spectacle of the Ashes transcended the level of cricket? Like, is this is the Ashes because it was the it was the second most watched series of all time and the second most attended series of all time? Yeah, it was crappy cricket. So, do we only care because it's England? Or yeah, I think so. Do we, I, we, yeah, we're getting sucked into the hype and the beers like Barmy Army and oh, I think I think that Australians are starting to believe our cricket side's good again. So I think that's why a they why they watch and we're smashing a team. We've had a pretty tough. Probably 12 months, really. We got beaten by South Africa at home. It was only, it was only 12 months ago we had horrible over, and yeah. we cut half the team. Yeah, and then we had, obviously, Pakistan, which was just they yeah. were, they were ordinary. And then we got, you know, we played all right against India, but... We Again, we, had, we, we, that was, we were England that one. Yeah. Oh, we weren't good enough for long enough, but we were pretty good. Yeah, and yeah, then, we'll, we'll, then, we got, then we lost to Bangladesh, which, you know, again, I tipped. I'm just not yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we came back to Australia, and everyone was cock hurt We got our full... Following up, finally, everything like that. And I think just all that build up was pretty. I reckon it was pretty well done by Cricket Australia. Actually, the build up. That's probably why. Especially after the pay dispute as well. Yeah. To go from the go from the bad boys to the look. Look, there's a magical festival we put on for you yeah. or something. So. so, and obviously it helped with England not being as competitive. But as you said, you know, you mentioned Adelaide Test. They want to move that to Australia next year because we've got India first, and then I think Sri Lanka afterwards. So then we need two day nighters. So, yeah, that whole festival then building up could get shifted, which is, I think it's a bit of an interesting play as well. But, yeah, look, I think it's great for cricket. The Ashes series is great for cricket. It's like when we play India, uh, South Africa and, and England, um, England, India, South Africa, sorry, that's when everyone gets interested in Australian cricket. Yeah, definitely. And obviously you mentioned you like to re- pick one and record it and then watch the better one live. Yeah. If there was if there was another test series on at the same time, would you watch the Australia games live or record it for the next day? No, I'd watch Australia live. Yeah. Too passionate about it. That's more like Big Bash versus Test cricket if it's two teams that, yeah. or four teams, whatever they're on. Well, two, yeah. I have no affiliation yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have a Big Bash team? Oh, well, Melbourne Stars, but. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they're not going too well at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get on to that a little bit later. Yeah. Probably um, too, mate. Yeah, true. Uh, question three, does Australia now possess the best bowling attack in the world? We had four bowlers take over 20 wickets for only the fifth time in a test series. I think we've got a pretty good bowling attack. I think even you watch the news bowling attack in South Africa, there's some pretty handy mm. quicks in there that we don't get to see because they play a lot in India. And obviously, why would you want to be a quick bowler bowling in India? Um, but I South Africa still, even if Stane's not fit, you still got more for Rabada and Vernon, who's got it going around corners mm. um, against them and us. That's why I'm looking forward so much to... To March, yeah. Because it's just been two buying teams in great conditions. You know, the Saffers have openly said they want to make all the pitches bowling friendly and they believe that bowling friendly test matches are more entertaining. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm looking forward to March. Definitely. Have you ever come across cross paths or seen any of the Aussie guys live from that, from that famous I, three? I haven't seen any of the of Big Four yeah. live. Um Probably a good thing. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I'd have to agree with you on that 100%. South Africa have also found a way, so let's say James Pattinson's fit and you have four of them, they've found a way that if all four are fit, they will play, mm. which is good for their case. And I, I really believe if, if Pattinson's fit as well, this summer we would have had all five of them. Like, yeah. Because they're all, like, Stark, Cummins, even Patterson. Can all bat. All right? bat. Payne yeah. can bat a bit. Like obviously, it started saying we probably wouldn't have been in the team. Who knows? But yeah, they can all bat a bit. Yeah. I reckon they would have five to play. And yeah, even um, South Africa's tail, sorry, held them up in that yeah. first innings. That, that's the reason why they got to that score, which in the end won the game. So even the India's tail, um, was it Pan, Pan, Pandy, yeah, 90 odd. So yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, on that, do you reckon Mitch Stark is Australia's most important bowler? Even so, in the sense that when he's not in the team or he's not 100% fit, we lose a massive chunk of our kind of strike force. I think it's, if you lose Stark, you've got to pick a replacement. No good picking a bird is mm-hmm. not like for like. And I know probably our, our quicks and state crew at the moment weren't, none of them were quick enough or fit, like your Berendorf's, your Patterson, quarter miles, yeah. your Patterson's. But, like, yeah, I would have picked another quick, so, like, you know, Kane Richardson or someone, like, or Jai Richardson who bowls, you know, roughly 140. You can't pick, you can't replace Stark with a 127, 130 kilometre bowl who nibbles it a bit. We've already got one of those, and that's Hazelwood. Yeah. Cummins is, the, is your next, you know, strike bowler. You need to replace like for like. Obviously, our buying takes weaker without Stark at the moment with injuries, but I reckon, you know, in six months, all going to plan, if he if we do lose Stark, I don't think he's a bigger loss than probably what he was for Melbourne. Yeah. Because we're going to have, hopefully, players fit. And, and Joel Paris is back now. I know he doesn't bowl as quick, but he's left-handed, swings it in a bit, does a little bit away, so should yeah. have Mitchell Johnson out of time. <laughs> Definitely. And obviously, you've had some exposure to senior bowlers at state level. What is the difference between like a 120, 130, 140? Like to us, it's just numbers, but like what is it? Like, um, I think when you go from sort of 130, 140, it's a significant difference. Like, just you just feel that little bit more rushed. Like, it's um, yeah, it gets, I reckon, like the higher you get up, the more like fewer kilometers difference makes, if that makes any yeah, sense. So, yeah. difference between 130 and 135 is a lot less significant than 140 and 145. Yeah. Um, so I think anywhere up towards 140 at that level, you, I wouldn't say comfortable, but you're like, yeah, I can, I can handle this. I haven't, other than in the nets, I haven't probably experienced 140 plus just yet at state level. Um, but yeah, I can imagine like in the nets, it's a, it's a real. Yeah, hurry up! Like yeah. you, you want to be switched on yeah. coffee or two before training. Just to be, <laughs> thinking yeah, of this dog. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be really switched on. Yeah. Um, number five: Does Australia actually win me nothing if you don't replicate it in England? Yeah, I reckon. Because no, no. Apart from South Africa, no one wins away anymore. So I reckon if we go to England and win, it's a bigger up here to the palms. They'd hate that more. Like you see. Like a few of their media people um, boycott and stuff like that, like cracking, then, yeah. cracking the shits about losing in Australia four 0 Wait till they, or hopefully wait till they lose in England. Imagine what they're going to do then. So that means more for me, I reckon. Yeah. Same as with the one in India. If we beat South Africa, and South Africa, that's massive. I reckon that's more than winning the Ashes at home. Definitely. And how do you think? We think that will correlate to that mass following of, of viewers as well, because obviously it's easy to watch an Australian series in Australia because it's there, it's the right time, it's in your face. Yeah. Do we do we think that kind of like the Creed Australia gets complacent because it's behind closed doors, for lack of a better word? Usually it's on Fox Sports, therefore the viewership is a bit less. Doesn't get front page news. Becomes that kind of like just happens in the background noise. A bit like the Bangladesh tour where they didn't yeah. show up, yeah, yeah, until later. Um, yeah, look, I think if we do well, then you'll see more more exposure. Yeah. Well, yeah, if we don't, then you'll see it slide away again. And like, have like, the same thing repeating, yeah. Yeah, so. On the selectors, we've got two big selection issues. Uh, first off is Mr. Bancroft. He uh, obviously, you, you got your angry against him, you're dirty on him because you knocked out your boy, Matt Renshaw. Yeah. But do you reckon he has the technique to survive in South Africa? Because Smith and uh, the selectors do. They went out and for some reason said, no, nah, no, nah, arms around him. Yeah, we, know we, we know we knife Renshaw behind the back. We know we gave Maxi the, Maxi the flick. But uh, this bloke, we're going to look after him. Look, he's no good at the moment, but we'll look after him. Yeah, like, we'll get him up there. Well, I don't have that support for Renshaw. I don't know. It's just, just so many contradictions coming from the selectors and the coaching staff regarding certain selections. But look, they got Payne, they got Mitch Marsh, they got Sean Marsh right. So they stick with Bancroft and they get that right good on them. I just want to. A real answer. Yeah, it, it, it kind of pisses me off because I want players that I like, you know, Renshaw and stuff like that playing. But yeah. I'm not going to get my own way. I'm not a selector, so yeah, not yet anyway. No, so. as long as we're winning, yeah, I'm happy. But if we're losing and stuff like that, then. Maybe one when the knife might come back out. No, definitely. So twofold for you, Will. First off, looking at Bancroft, do you think he has a deficiency and do you think he can fix it? Uh, I think he's a good player and he'll come good. Yeah. So I think technique is probably the most overrated thing in cricket. Yeah. Like everyone, me included, Looks happy, to, happy to pick apart Steve Smith's technique for fun when he started going, how is this bloke playing for a shot? I still remember... 
the day, Boxing Day 2011, I reckon it was, when we lost to him, we got rolled for 98 and he played. I reckon he batted at six or seven. And I said to Dad, I said, if this bloke ever plays for Australia again, I'm not, I'm not coming to the cricket anymore. I cannot believe they've picked a bloke who bats like this to play for our country. And now I would yeah. absolutely give up an arm and a leg to watch him play. Um, so I think, yeah, there are, everyone's got a weakness. Bancroft clearly does in some way, but I think he's got, he's got what it has or what you need to make it. But I agree that Renshaw does as well, so yeah. either or. And that's hard as well. And like, you might experience this in the future. Like, you know, every state team has, you know, 11 blokes who are in their first 11, and you've got the blokes battling for those spots. And then you've got all those states battling for 11 spots in a test team. Yeah. Like, so obviously, you know, Bancroft and Renshaw are both good cricketers. Yeah. We can only have one of them in the team. Yeah. So someone's going to miss out. And what we get pissed off about, though, is that, this is my next question for you, is we don't get pissed off that it's Bancroft in the team. We get pissed off because they tell us this is why Renshaw's out, but then a Sean Marsh comes in. And then he's like, oh, you need more experience. Well, Max needs to make hundreds, but then Tim Payne comes from two years of no cricket. Yeah. So have you ever had a bullshit excuse? Have you ever missed out on a team and then someone's told you a bullshit excuse and you want to know, you just want to know the real reason? I haven't had any bullshit excuses yet, but I kind of have been told from a young, or from a young age, especially as coming into the system, like things aren't going to go your way. So... It's better to probably just cop it on the chin and just go, you know what, there are going to be contradictions, like there are going to be dumb reasons that you sit there and go, why is that the case? But I guess that's just part of the parcel these days. And, yeah, as you said, like everyone ripped into pain at the time and I I sort of looked at it. I just played with him in a CA 11 game. And I was like, he's a gun keeper, he's a really good batter, and the other blokes aren't going that well. I'd pick it. Like, I, I was happy with that selection just based on the fact I'm like, I agree, he's the best kick batsman in Australia. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know he didn't get a game for Tassie, but I think he's a better player than Wade is, so I'd pick him. Yeah. And that's a, and like, they've been proven to be right. Like, probably been lucky, like, everyone got on a bit of the um of the wave winning 4-0, and it was pretty hard not to do well. But, um, yeah, in that regard, like, you look at it, and Sean Marsh is the same. Like, I watched him play... Like, I versed him in the JLT this year, and I was like, you're way too good to be here. Like, I shouldn't be on the same field as you. Like, you're, like, way too good. So he gets picked, and I go, no, nah, he's one of the best six batsmen in Australia. And I think that's just what they go off. And, yeah, I, I again, Sean Marsh, you look at it, and you go, it's probably our second best batter in the series. So. Yeah. That leads in, well, to another question is, obviously, there's a lot of chat this year about averages and numbers and total run scored and stuff, but... What's more important, the eye test or the stat test? I mean, you look at, like, you, obviously you were there, you saw Sean Marsh, and you're like, that bloke's too good. Like, I don't yeah. care if he's only played a game or he's just come back from injury, like, pick him. Yeah. You, you play with Tim Payne. Like, is that more important? And should we get used to that as a public that, you know, like, who cares about stats? Like, yeah. just, you know, pick the blokes that we think are going to win this game because we, the selectors, are more knowledgeable about cricket than you are, the general public, and get on with it. Yeah, well, that starts my rant about... You know, all I've heard of, of this summer is, you know, blokes aren't averaging high enough, not making runs in, in shield cricket, blah, blah, blah. But to be fair, we didn't have shield cricket for the last two tests, I'm pretty sure, because we've had BBL. So all the, you know, the professional cricketers that play state cricket, they go from, you know, JLT Cups or one-day cricket into four-ball, four-day cricket for four rounds, I think, isn't it? It's four or five. Yeah. yeah. Then they go to BBL for pretty much two months. While, you know, the, the boys aren't playing BBL or not, you know, they're, they're playing, again, longer form cricket back at grade cricket. Then they go back to four-day cricket. So it's just, it, you, you can't, they've got, they got to go from so many different types of game style. It's so much harder for them to, you know, be out there batting for two days because they're not, A, they're not most of them are like fully professional. Mm. Um, so, you know, you've you got to be feel sorry for them. They're going from big bash where they've got to try and hit every ball for six in the next week, they're going out there to try and bat four days. Hmm. So the averages aren't going to be as good as they were 10, 15, 20 years ago. When, when all it was was four-day cricket. Four-day cricket, and then you'd have a day break, and then you'd play your Matador Cup or Mercantile Cup back hmm. then. So I think people have to get over that. And yeah, go off the eye test. They're good enough. They're, you know, and they're obviously making runs, and they look good. You know, pick them. Hmm. And how hard is it, Will, to change between forms? So obviously, if you mentioned before we started recording it, you're training with the stars. Yeah. They're not playing in 2020 cricket. How hard is that? Is that swap? Yeah, it's um, it's not too bad at the moment because I know I'm not playing. It's probably harder when you're playing different formats. You'll go 
I don't know, in grade cricket on the weekend, you play at 2020, and then you play that on Saturday and Sunday, then on the Monday you're starting a Futures League game, which is four days, and you're like, well, been trying to slog every ball for two days, and now I have to go back and, yeah, as you said, back for a day or back for two days. So um, it is a challenge, but I think, yeah, it's kind of just the way of the world. And yeah. If that's your job, that's what you've got to do. Like, it's probably, if you look at it in that regard, it's just like adjusting in any... I guess, workplace, but it is probably difficult because cricket compared to, like, your footy or your soccer where you play for 90 minutes in soccer. Like, it does, you might play a Champions League game one week and Bristol City in the League Cup the next week, but it's still 90, 90 minutes. It's still... The yeah, absolute like fundamentals don't change. Yeah, yeah, compared to... It's a bit different playing for three hours compared to four days where you've got 20 overs to get 200 rather than try and make a score of 500 over a day and a half. So... Yeah, that's where it is pretty difficult, but I think, yeah, as you said, that's why you probably got to work pretty hard in pre-season and stuff to almost have all bases covered and then maybe the couple of sessions before that particular game, that's when you go, all right, this is my plan for this game coming up. And the commentators need to be a bit nicer to you guys <laughs> for not averaging 50 or and stuff like have that. You, have you guys noticed on the BBL, it's every catch once you've retired is an absolute sitter? Yeah. I've noticed that, that every time someone drops a catch, everyone who's played Koo before reckons it's the easiest catch in yeah. the world. When I haven't had the experience of doing it, but I would be absolutely shitting myself if I was under a high ball with 50,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Swirling around with lights and stuff. And everything. I shit myself under the high ball when it's like 300. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's yeah. four people watching this. Yeah. <laughs> one one from the leader taking photos. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, so yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, I agree. I do probably need to understand that Selectors have got a tough job, but they're never going to satisfy everyone. And yeah, averages probably don't mean as much as they used to. Yeah. And the other thing you look at is this is just an example. So in the Shield games leading up, the first Shield game was a pink ball game, and basically every wicket was a green top, and no batters made runs except for I think Kawaj made 100, but he was in anyway. And then like the next couple of rounds are still pretty juicy. So you're like, well. Out of our six test hopefuls, four of them have got unplayable balls before they've got to five. Like, yeah. just, Jim, just, yeah. Jimmy Pearson and Renshaw caught some absolute Yeah, yeah. Time. And, like, you just look at it. Like, Renshaw, I think, got caught down league side in another game. Like, yeah. it's such a luck of the draw thing if you go, and then, I don't know, this is just someone might have got dropped three times and got on to make 100. Renshaw gets dropped that or caught down the league side for four, and you go, oh, how much of it does Renshaw? He made four, and this yeah. bloke made 100, and it's like, hang on a minute, he should have been out. Yeah. Twice before he got to 10, was Palm LB on 30, and went on to get 100. Like, if you get, like, it's a very sort of lucky game in that regard. Also, Shield you've got to score quickly to get bonus points. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. And you, again, invites them to score more freely, which means they're going to get more chances. <laughs> That's because Cricket Australia want, you know, quicker. Quicker results and more results in four-day cricket, so bonus points for scoring runs when it's every 100 overs or something is not yeah. something like that. So. Every run you get before 100 overs or something you get bonus yeah. points for. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. Like just... Yeah, so the media and the commentators need to take that into consideration. That's, that's what I'm getting with that. Definitely. I probably went in for a bit too long. No, but... that's okay. <laughs> and uh, on that, so the other thing that media uh, has been going on about is Kawaja. And Kawaja, I don't mind him because as a media performer, because he likes to bite back. Yeah, he's so good his, on, his, good quote, on social. his quote, even just face to face, his quote was, it's disappointing in regards to the feedback from the media because when I'm scoring runs, I'm elegant, and when I'm not scoring runs, I'm lazy. So the question is, is he lazy or elegant? Oh, he's a gun, he's elegant. Yeah. yeah. And people just need to realise that, like, and it's interesting, I went back and read a profile of him when he first came out. There was a massive hype about the 37 he made in the Gabba, his first home test. And he got embarrassed by that. He's like, I made 37. Why are people talking about me like this? And it's because like, I was, everyone could obviously see that he has that elegance and that just that, that pure batting action. Yeah. And when he was asked, who did you look up to as a, a cricketer? He didn't really follow Australian cricket, obviously, to his background and stuff. He didn't like how, especially the Steve War era, how people, they were treating the opposition team. And he's like, well, I don't really want my mates are from the same background, so I don't really like that. Um, so his favourite cricketer was Lara. And yeah. you can obviously see the correlation yeah. between that and what he's trying to emulate now in his, in his test career. So... He's obviously a jet. Again, we go back to the eye test. Like, we just need to back him in. Like, yeah. The guy will make bulk runs. Yeah. And, he, and he's, if him, Maxi, those type of characters that are outgoing and kind of effervescent need to be supported. You can go, it shouldn't be like a shut up, don't talk to the media, don't say this, don't speak your mind. It should be you do you, and if you make runs, and happy days. We'll back so, you in. We'll back yeah. you in yeah. so. And for more than one test. Like, again, if you get nicked off down the leg side or whatever, 
you're not going to drop you. Like, if you make Callum Ferguson run out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See you, mate. Yeah. Yeah. And he's now he's one of the lead run scorers at Shoe Cricket. Yeah. But also, he made a couple of 50s and he, he copped a few stiff LBs, like, you know, the two umpires calls yeah, and stuff exactly, like that. So, yeah, yeah it could have gone either way for him. Um, and then a couple to round out um, from the English side. Mason Crane debuted. Uh, he didn't quite beat his uh, his goal. His goal was to beat Shane Warne's debut, and he didn't quite do it. Uh, one for 193. Uh, do we overhype spinners? Like the, all the chat and everyone on the ground panel was like, "Oh my god, how amazing this is a leg spinner!" He bowled some crap. He bowled some good balls. At the end of the day, isn't he just like a young cricketer that's kind of good at cricket and probably has a future with England? But well, by eye, it looks good, and I hope he does well. But yeah, against like, Australia, so let's just calm down. Like, he, yeah. he, he bowled one for a he bowled Bryce game figures like. Like, crazy. Yeah, crazy figures. Like, he's, he's all right, but he's not next chain one. No. Move on. And the last one, uh, will the one-day series between Australia and England be more interesting than the Ashes series? No. 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 BBL all the way. That's yeah. all I want to watch in the India-South game. And what do you think is the future for one-day cricket? Because like, obviously, Shield Cricket, I think, this year got hyped up because of the Test Series and, like, yeah. selection issues. BBL is obviously going gangbusters because that's where they see the future being. And then, like, the JLT Cup kind of just got swept. Yeah. And there was no television for them. There was only going to watch some of the games online. Yeah. I think it needs to change. Yeah. The structure of it needs to change. Um, there needs to be some, like, level of importance on it. We had a meeting with um, Pat Howard before the season started. And this has been reported in the media, so I won't get in trouble for saying this, because he actually <laughs> told us, like, it's basically the Nut Cup. Like, we don't really care in terms of Australian selection and stuff, how you go. Like, it's the Nut Cup to us. Like, it's got no correlation to anything. And I think that needs to change. And I think there's rumours that they are going to change the structure of it and they might split it that some games are played at the start of the year and then some played in like a little period before BBL next year. Yeah. Not 100% sure if that's confirmed or not, but that's the rumour. Um, I'd honestly like to see it go back to the old format of Shield game then Two same days. team on one team day. Because yeah. Yeah. Um, then I think as well, if you're going like well in the Shield and bad in the JLT, it's a good opportunity to play young players and whatever coming through. Um, or, you know, you can use your whole squad a bit more, Where which which is like what soccer and footy probably do a bit more. Yeah. Like cricket's like, you've got your best 11 and unless someone gets injured or is going really badly, like the other blokes just don't. They're playing Futures yeah, League. And, yeah. and, and Which isn't the worst thing. Like, you yeah. still enjoy Futures League and go cricket, but I just think in that regard, it gives it, like, gives more opportunities to players like, and you can sort of structure your season around it. it means yeah. coaches have to manage it a bit better. It means you have to change it, change it up a bit, and I think that would be a better way to go. But even splitting it would be better. So there's some... So when they pick this ODI squad for the England series, instead of going, oh, Lynn smacked three sixes in the BBL last night, let's pick him, you go... How to go for Queensland in the three JLT games? I oh, made 100 and 250s. Yeah, he deserves it. He's been in good form in yeah. field cricket. So I think that made, yeah, I think it needs to change in that regard. Would you be, do you remember when it went, uh, probably about 10 years ago when the Matador Cup or JLT Cup or Mercantile Cup, whatever you want to call it? Yeah. It was, it was the Brovi like, Cup back then. Brovi Cup was 220 over. Yeah. Years. And Hodge used to sit off for yeah. the yeah. 25 over fielding innings in between yeah. and try and, try and <laughs> smack him. Yeah. 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 Would, you, would you prefer that, or do you reckon um, that? I don't know. I, I never got to play that format, yeah. but yeah, it'd be interesting. I feel like, yeah, 50 over cricket, it's unfortunate because I like it as a format. Like, for a pure cricketer's format, I think it's good because if you understand the game, like, you understand the different phases and what teams are trying to do. But yeah. I understand for your average Joe that he's sort of just watching the cricket because there's nothing else on that sort of overs 10 to 40 can be pretty boring. Yeah. Like, it's just five or four men out and... Blokes basically knocking ones and twos. Yeah, you can go six or seven and over. Yeah. Pretty comfortably. Yeah. yeah. So I can understand why they're looking for different ways to, to fix that. Yeah. But. I think with, uh, yeah, if, especially, I think domestic cricket can revitalise one day cricket in the sense that you get that, that club mentality about it. Yeah. So you get exposure to your likes of yourselves coming up through the ranks and they use it like, yeah, it's like the Europa League equivalent yeah. for, for United yeah. last year. So this is an opportunity we can play our youngsters. It's still a great team. We're not going to gift spots. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, you get exposed to those dudes. Whereas, yeah, for the average punter, it is like, oh, a one day is essentially the first turnovers of a 2020 yeah. test cricket without the intensity, the last turnovers of a 2020. Yeah. And then that's how, that, that's how I think that's how they perceive it. And yeah. so, yeah, 
and they try to fix it with you know super overs and power players and whatever. But it's like it's it is what it is. It's, it's like every power yeah. player under the sun. Yeah, yeah. Sort of last a year or two. Yeah, basically. exactly. Same. Not a bad time to bowl. The fish has been on the Australian batsman. The runs have dried up. And there we go. That's our wrap-up of the uh, of the summer. Fortunately for us, us cricket nuffies, there's a wild world of cricket going out there. So let's do a quick little recap of India, South Africa, which is obviously the uh, the best test we've seen in a long time. Yeah, it was a good one. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. And so is bowling first wickets the way to go? Well, the South Africa have seen the thing. So the coach that came out said, we're going to, or before the series, we're going to doctor our wickets to be bowling friendly. We believe they make more exciting test matches. Test the batsman out, and they did that. It was a great test. Like even we still missed a day, like we lost the whole day to weather. Still got a result within what four days. Yeah, yeah. And there's plenty of wickets, runs to be made if you're good enough. It's a great career. I I watched that over the BBL and a bit of the Ashes, like you know. Yeah. So it was great. And now even playing as well, but like watching or playing, do you prefer those other games versus 500, 500, 300, no result? Uh definitely is like a cricket watcher I prefer to watch games like that like I thought it was just awesome as a batter I'd probably prefer him to just be highways <laughs> 4 for 550 declared and then no nah, but I think yeah I think even as a batter like, I I wouldn't prefer to be challenged on like a juicy route, but I understand that I think the way of the future in test cricket is that they're going to have to do it to keep it alive keep it interesting because like no one wants to watch teams make 3 for 280 in a day and just boring is all anything, and the yeah. only way you get a wicket is if the batter gets bored. And I think, yeah, it's definitely the way of the future. And the interesting part was their scoring rates are actually quite high. Yeah, so no, both teams yeah. averaged above three and a half and over. Yeah. And so obviously, if the bowling team is willing to attack, there's more loose balls, the field's up, so there's more chances to score as well. So they've almost got, I think, because in my head, the perfect test would be it's like you average around about 35 runs a wicket. So both teams all out for 350 twice or 400 in the first innings and 200 in the second innings is pretty much about right because yeah. it gives you a good contest. You don't want it to be, you know, 80s that like we get in the subcontinent yeah. and teams, teams rolled on the first day with balls spinning twice the width of the pitch or whatever. Yeah. But that was a good contest. Yeah, we had like, in the, on the first day the AB just looking like, amazing. Yeah. And he had just barely played any test cricket mm. and the ball's doing a bit and watching about like that, that's way more entertaining than watching Warner belt people around on the MCG on yeah. a wicket that, you know, looks like Chapel Street. So yeah. it's a road, but yeah. I, I enjoyed it much more. And yeah, I think India will adjust the conditions to be better the next test because there was a few nicks behind from, you know, those playing away from their body, which they get away with a lot in those solid decks in India, but over in South Africa, they weren't getting away with it. So it will interesting yeah. to see the second test, whether they have adjusted more to the conditions and reckon it'll be Pretty a, bit, a lot closer than the first test. No, definitely. And looking forward to the March tour, what does it mean for the, the Aussies and the us fans? Should we be scared? Should we be excited? Should we... Excited and scared. Yeah. Because, like, they're bowling. And seriously, like, you, you see us in England last tour and even in Adelaide when it was doing a bit that night, we're in a bit of trouble. And that's just needing off. And then you got... So they've got Vernon, the almighty god of swing. Yeah. Who just does what he wants. They've got T-Rex arms, more cool. Yeah. But then you got the guy, you got the rest of them who bowl the heat. Yeah, Ramada. Like, yeah. They had like obviously India aren't used to the conditions, but like Kohli, who's meant to be the, the you know, God's gift to batting, or all the God's gifts to batting, uh, jumping about, looking like like a great like a glad cricket, a club cricket. Yeah. Like, and that's that's one of the best in the world. So I'm a bit, I'm a bit scared for guys who aren't Steve Smith. Yeah, and I'm a bit annoyed that Stain is injured again because I love watching him fire up and just yeah. get in. He looks so angry. I love it. Yeah. But watching Ramada is just as good. Like. Seriously, I could sit there and watch a bar bowl all night and just take poles. Do you know how old Bar is? 21 or 22. 22? Yeah. That's, that's awesome. He's got a long, long yeah. career. Yeah. Top yeah. And he's going to be destroying bowling, like batting attacks, sorry, for a long time. The yeah. 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 And now, uh, yeah, look, I think I'm a bit worried because, like I said, like, when the ball's moving around a bit, we're very vulnerable. But it's also going to be a great contest, like, especially the, like, when we bowl. Yeah. Like, imagine Stark bowling 150, coming, Cummins. You, know, you saw how good he was over there in his first ever test. Hazelwood coming in to do the van in the second yeah. innings. And you got, I reckon Mitch Marsh, I actually do rate Mitch Marsh is buying a little bit, especially when his shoulder's right. Yeah. And he could be, you know, he does a little bit with it as well. And then you got the goat, so. Yeah. And, they're, and they're, 
they're, they're pretty much very similar teams. They've always played similar cricket. So yeah, the, the their bats are a lot stronger. Their bats a lot stronger, but in terms of how we like to build our teams, we like to play aggressive cricket. Well, most of the time, we've kind of transitioned out of that at the moment. But then yeah, we like to play that that two genuine quicks, one nippy and a spinner, yeah. and then try and bat deep and heavy and fast, which yeah. is what they do as well. Yeah, so. well, the cock, the Villiers, Dipper C, like <laughs> the three bats you just keep watch again and watch all those. Am I? Yeah, you know, he's been a little bit out of touch. Comes in, if he gets in the form, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. The Cox pours much as well. Like, yeah. If he gets going, yeah. Nothing. No one's safe. So yeah, it's a really great series. I'm really uh, looking forward to it so much. Yeah, definitely. Out! He's got to. He, he's yes! He's caught it on the third attempt. He's on a hat trick. Can you believe that? In out, in out. What a bowler! The other thing is taking our TV time is of course the BBL. Uh, and I asked you before we started about to give us your, your standout players, just a couple. Who's been impressing you in the domestic dreaming? Uh, my man Short. Yep, is definitely. just absolutely tearing it up. So, I, And luckily, you came on this podcast. You might have saved yourself a shout. I have you saved came yourself. On, you came on a couple of weeks ago and said you'd shout the whole live podcast. It was a few months bar. ago. It was before the summer. It was eight started. weeks. It was eight weeks. A couple of months, a couple of weeks. I've been on the, so it's just so you know, Will, I've been on the Darcy Short bandwagon for a while. <laughs> And uh, we did a live podcast at our, our sponsor, Yorkshire Hotel. And I said I'd shout the bar if he did not play short form cricket for Australia before the summer was out. I reckon you safe bet. Yeah, I reckon as well. I so yeah. you, you could be a chance with Lynn out that he could be doing it earlier. Yeah, well, soon. yeah, I was thinking that today. I reckon they, to be honest, I reckon they'll pick um, Short Marsh. Yeah, I reckon was, the only the only thing I gauge from that, I don't understand why they've taken so long, unless it's to see where Marsh's injury goes. It's not that hard to go, oh, this bloke's next in line, so yeah. maybe this is why I've taken two or three days to pick the yeah. next couple of the rank. Yeah. And that was the case, though. If Sean Mark's coming back from injury, look forward to South Africa. What's more important, the South African Test Series or Sean Mark's playing five one days, when you could expose, again, like if we're going to use domestic one-day cricket as a way to blood youngsters, surely yeah. we should do the same for international one-day cricket for the guys over at that level. Yeah. So it makes more, more sense to pick Sean. Yeah. And possibly because of the World Cup, Next year, Marsh probably won't be in that squad. Sean, that is. Yeah, but maybe, he, you know, he might. Short's an opening bat, so who do you, like, Finch and Warner open Smith bats at three. So Short then has to come in at five or six. You've already got your Marsh, you know, those sorts of players as well. So it's going to be... Yeah, 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 definitely. But again, like, I think, especially with him playing solely T20 cricket, if he's to come in at five or six and go ballistic in the last ten overs, that's no different to going ballistic in the first ten overs of a... Yeah, that's right. He does about six and seven for the yeah, WA. For the, for the in the shield, well, so the shield, he so. does a lot, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. He can he, do both. Yeah, he's a gun. Uh, nice and bowlers? Bowlers, uh, well, I, I love watching Rashid. Everyone's been on the... Yeah, uh, obviously Ty, but he's, he's going to... He's been copping a bit of stick though the last couple of games. He went, he went a bit too early in the head wobble. Yeah. Like he, got, he had like 11 after three, 11 poles after three games and went, oh, I'm pretty good. And then he took like three and three. Yeah. And he's going, oh, I've went it early. Uh, Narvi's been good. Um, really reckon, uh, obviously, Mitchell Johnson has buy, been buying awesome, but Agar's taken that. I reckon he's taken that next step. He's ready now to definitely play okay. high. He's bowling really well. Um, he's looking good with the bat. And also Turner from Perth as well. Like he's smashing down the line. He smashed him a few weeks ago. Like about a week ago, I was well against... I think it was when he, uh, might have been at Renegades as well. No, so it was Renegades the other night, might have been Hobart, something like that. It was about a week ago, he smashed like 50 or 40 odd very quickly. Mm. Got him home with um, David. Um, yeah, so there's a few, like, I still reckon Perth for the team to beat. They don't lose at home. The Heat will probably struggle without Lynn. Um, then you got the Renegades and the Strikers, but the Strikers also lose Travis Head so, and Billy Stanley. Yeah. So they're, you know, that's why I don't like these one days as well during the BBL because it just means that these teams are a bit weaker. Where's Stan like though? Isn't he, didn't he get picked in the one day team? Not in the original one. No, oh, I'm not sure. I thought he was picked. That could be my bad. No, okay. That's just you with your fanboy glasses. Yeah, like sorry. Richardson the two yeah, yeah, sorry. So I'm a fan of Billy as well. So <laughs> no, he's a guy. I get Rose, Rose colored glasses on a bit. He'd be a good guy. I reckon he, if he was fit, would have been the perfect spare ball to take to South Africa as yep. well. Yeah. Another bloke who lost five on forties and yeah, and the bounce yeah. steep, yeah. He would have had a field day over there. Yeah. Have we missed anyone from that BBR list there that you really like to look at this summer? Um, 
No, I reckon you can't. Rashid Khan's one of the most entertaining blokes. Yeah, it's good, isn't I it? like just watching him as a bloke yeah. more, even more than his cricket. It is nice to see a, a spin bowler that really enjoys their own work. Yeah, and Navi yeah, as well. Really like, gets I don't know if yeah. he, he, they get about batting, it. Yeah, yeah, when he was batting as well, I was, yeah. loves it. Like, he got after Zampi the other yeah. night. It was good. It's awesome to watch. Yeah. To hear his post match interview after that. No, nah, I didn't. Nah. Just was like, oh, the, the captain came up to me and said, as soon as Zampi comes on, you're next in. He goes, Yes, I will take down Zampa. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see there's the yeah. Afghan players coming over and playing. And yeah. They're, they're going to have, yeah. 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 have a decent T20 team. And a, and a World Cup team looking forward to the end to next year, yeah. not one day. Yeah. So, so then to round out, obviously, we've got you on, Will. And you probably know, well, actually, this is the challenge. So pose this to, pose this to Brian. Brian is a self-confessed cricket nuffy slash badger, and he likes to get on board early. So what was uh, the initial quote? You would watch the bloke at like 11 or 12. You see them be really good. Oh, so I watched Jack, Josh Hazelwood as a 16-year-old, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I said that... Oh, that's, that's 10 years ago. Yeah, so, what did you say? So I went and watched him play in, in Sydney. Okay. Uh, so I, I've seen him, I saw him play. I've seen Smith play. I saw uh, Husey play. I saw Kawaja play. I've seen a few few uh, young players play. I've been in Seed. Uh, Harvey play as well. And he just likes to go really early, yeah. like 16, and go, yeah. Hazelwood will will open the bowling for Australia. So I've got proof, like I've got like, heaps of mates from that. He's, like, he's like the nothing crystal ball. Kind of <laughs> so, mate, you got I've, wrong? I've got plenty wrong. Oh, um, yeah. Henriques is one, um, Madison. Madison. Um, you had a, you had a, had to be a, fair though, they're both. They've made it, they just, just didn't, they just didn't stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's been a few others that I have really botched up as well. Yeah. But to be fair, you've never had Hill, one. Hill used to play for Victoria and yeah. show Talent-wise, he was ready to go. Yeah. That was really, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. been plenty of others, so yeah, I, I get probably one out of every 100, right? Yeah. So that's all right. Um, so yeah, the challenge here is nothing versus the expert. You've obviously played a lot of these guys or been around them and exposed them, so you know them a lot better than what we do. So we're going to give you who's your picks that we should look out for and from the Australian under-19 squad. Oh, and well. then and Will will be the uh, the check. Obviously your around. man Lloyd, I reckon these ladies. The, yeah. The, the, the round, the, um, <laughs> the lingy, lingy lookalike. Yeah. Um, I really like Brian. I reckon he's pretty handy bait. He hit the ball a long way. And I just reckon Uncle as well, like captain. Um, yeah, they're, they're my three for the tournament. I, will Sutherland might do something as well. I saw he's been batting a bit light in the order and he bowled a bit all right the other day, so maybe him. No raps on Austin Warren? I haven't seen enough of him, to be honest. To be completely honest, I've not watched enough period of him, so I can't. I'm only going by a media report, so I'm not going to follow the, the. I'm not going to be a sheep there. Yeah. That's cool. That's me. Thoughts on that? Anywhere missed? I reckon Sanger. Yeah. I know it's a bit of an obvious one, cause yeah. he's, but I reckon he's next level. Like, well, he made 100 against yeah, England. Yeah. Even before that, though, like, you can just. We played against a lot of those blokes at the 19s last year, like the, the core of that group. Um, we're in the CA 11, um, and he's just like, yeah, just, I reckon, just that next level above everyone yeah. else. Yeah, well, I reckon he'll definitely, he was one of the players I had in yeah. that six to be the next day Smith, so yeah, yeah I reckon yeah, he's, he's a gun. Yeah, he's yeah. always been a leader as well, in all the underage teams yeah. and stuff like that, so, and the Cricket Australia have always really rated him. That other one, the other one I have is Evans from Victoria, he's yeah. really quick, like for yeah. someone that young as well, Yeah, seriously quick. Is so, he, he's not as, is he a Zav? Yeah, yeah, Zav, yeah. yeah Zav, so we hate him, but yeah. we, yeah. But you love him as well. I love him as yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. and he's, yeah, he'll he's be sharp, great. yeah, very, very but yeah, I agree with the others as well. Brian will be the perfect T20 uh, yeah, he's one a, day. Potential next day be Warner. Yeah. Early can, call again, but... Can strike a ball. Yeah, like, and just loves it as well. Just, like, he took, thrives off. He took Crane for a few in the uh, CA 11 game in, uh, was in Perth, I think. Yeah, yeah the, when they were batting for... Well, yeah, just, just batting out the overs, yeah, really. he, he, he uh, launched a few massive. off him. Yeah, so... I reckon, and Leach, I think, was the other bowler he just launched yeah. into. I like him a lot. Yeah, yeah, so but I reckon I reckon in England are they be okay. India and, and West Indies obviously the reigning winners. They might be all right, but I reckon India is probably the team to beat. Do you have any idea about any other countries? No, no idea. No. Just Sri Lanka because there was a series against them in April, and I think we won pretty comfortably. comfortably. Yeah, and we we smashed them in the white game yeah. uh, yesterday as well. Yeah, so that, yeah. I don't reckon they'll be any good. We've seen most of them. Um, you just, you just go off what you've seen previously. You know, West Indies are always generally all right. England, obviously, pretty good. And India, and obviously us. I'm hoping we win it. Um, 
because we didn't win it last time, so hopefully yeah. we win it this time. We're due for some wins. Yeah. All right. Plenty of stuff to look forward to. controversial for a minute. Wow. Here we go. I, I do want to bring this up. Okay, let's bring it up. Right. So we'll, we'll, we listen to the radio a lot, yeah. and I reckon this is pretty harsh, and I just want to get your response to it. So uh, James Brayshaw was talking on the radio, and he said he spoke to Greg Blewett, and he asked, oh, yeah. he, asked, he asked Greg Blewett whether there was any talent from the current under 19 squad that we should be looking out for. And Blewett's response was, no, none of them will make it. Seriously? That's what James not, not, even, not even like, I'm going to open the bowling for Australia one day. It was, they're no good. Like, he didn't talk about it. So usually that's like an opportunity, like, oh, Greg, tell us about him, the 19 squad, and how they're going to go, and a few blokes look out for. No, none of them are any good in the conversation. That's what, that's what James Brayshaw said on Triple M Radio on, during the test cricket in the Sydney test. Yeah. Referring to the World Cup squad on the ship. Yeah. Just referring to the state championships in general. So he, Greg was at state championships. James Brayshaw asked him, and Greg's response was, no, nah, they're no good. Of the 88 blokes that played in that tournament, what's, zero. What's Greg Bullitt's like past in terms of, is he known as a good bloke or is he known as a bit I've of got, a... I've got no idea. I've not, I haven't he, heard anything he's in, about him. He's in the current coaching Squad or can try to coach Yes. Um, <laughs> so was I when I heard that because I, I thought I could I could pick a, a decent uh, young cricketer, but um, as as we've just spoke about my yeah. record, but um, and then you reckon no? Nah. So I, I reckon I, I, unless James was taking the piss, yeah. but do you reckon that's do you pay attention to the media and they say that if they, if you heard that sort of shit or would you just be like no? Nah, I reckon I reckon Greg's had a really bad day and couldn't be bothered. Talking. Talking. Yeah. It's just giving it the old numb, but something would have happened. Yeah. I don't understand how you can say that. If they're the best, how often has it been that out of a whole group of players, there's not one or two? Like, well, it's probably actually statistically impossible. Yeah. Because even if they were no good, someone has to come through. They have to go through. Yeah. Okay. And like, a bloke's just been the second youngest bloke, I think it was, to ever make 100 against England behind Sachin Tendulkar. Yeah. So I don't know how Sanger missed that boat. Yeah. Um, and then, like, heaps of them have played, like, CA 11 games. Exactly, yeah. First up, first class of this eight yeah. games. Yeah, Jack Edwards has just smacked, like, 100 or 99, 99 yeah. that game. And yeah. Yeah, I reckon that is an absolutely dreadful statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it, was, it shocked me. So I was yeah. listening, I was at work listening to it, and I was like, what the f- well, yeah. Surely not. Like, yeah, no, You can't be saying that, because especially he's in the a current coaching setup in the yeah. Australia. And he really needs to take lessons from Langer. Yeah. yeah, he needs to get the tub, the bike, bike pump out, and start pumping Pumping up tires. Yeah. That's, that's his job. Yeah, because like way. I think going back through it, and this again this is me bad enough. He, of our under nineteen World Cup squads, most of the time there's four or five that have successful shield, if not gone further yeah. from that. What squad of thirteen or fifteen yeah. that go over? So that's a pretty. That's like thirty odd percent. So that's yeah. a pretty good strike rate. Yeah, and we're doing a right at world cricket at the moment. So yeah. yeah, so you think that'd be the case? Yeah. All right then. So. Thanks, Baz. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Going Will. on, and you're welcome back. Nice. Welcome back anytime, mate. You've yeah. done, you've done nice really well. Yeah. I love cricket. The cricket's good. Break.